Hello everybody and welcome to another Flash building tutorial. In this lesson we'll be working in Flash CS3 but you can be in Flash CS4. We'll be using ActionScript 3 and what we'll be doing is showing you how to control externally loaded dynamically loaded SWFs. I recently gave a tutorial about uh, that was all about uh, loading external SWF files multiple external SWFs loading and unloading them and some people had questions about how to control those externally loaded SWFs from the main file so you can control those externally loaded SWFs from buttons or action script within the main file and I'll show you how to do that now so let's go into open and on my desktop here I have it's called ball project and inside I have my main file which would be like your main site and there's my SWFs folder where my external SWFs that I want to load in would be stored if I double click that you'll see there's one called balls so let's open the main file so here in the main file for this example you can just think of this as any timeline in any part of your flash application or your flash website so say you're several movie clips deep way down deep into movie clips uh, you can load this SWF at any point at any timeline as long as you just put the code uh, in the actions panel in the correct place in the timeline okay so I'm just gonna do it on the the main timeline here the main scene layer one on keyframe one so let's open that well first let's open the external SWF so you guys can look at it and how it's structured out okay inside the external SWF I have a movie clip with two balls in it and they're called my blue balls they have an instance name of my blue balls and if you double click inside of it you can see the animation that runs if you press enter they just go from one side to the other and they have a stop action set right here press F9 open your actions panel and I'll have these files uh, free for download these example files so you press 9 you can look at that or press F9 you can look at the uh, action script that's on any of these keyframes okay so let's go ahead and press F12 so we output an SWF F12 publishes. When you publish, it outputs an SWF and an HTML usually, HTML file. So in the main file, so all that we really need to do is uh, look at the instance name we have here. That's important. Okay, so let's go into my main file. and let's write out the code that we need to import this thing in okay so we'll highlight the first or any keyframe that you want to code it out on to, to load your SWFs and so basically what we're doing is we're going to be commanding external timelines we're going to be commanding timelines that aren't even in the flash file the main flash file until they get loaded in then we can control them they're going to be totally external. So you go to var ldr. Let's create a, a, a variable for the loader object that's going to load up our SWF. And you can also load JPEGs the same way. Images. Okay, there's the loader object. Now let's type in another var for the URL request. Is URL? Let's just name it URL rec. And then, cause I think that's the standard naming for that in the action script help file. I try to use the standard ones whenever I can. And this is a new URL request. Let's put an open. Let's get that E small. Open parenthesis, close parenthesis, semicolon. And in between, 
put a double quote, a couple of spaces, another double quote. And right here is where we're going to refer to that SWFs folder. If you look at the structure of our project, you'll see we have the main file and then the SWFs folder. This is where all your external SWFs can be located to organize things better. And here we published out. There's that file. So that's how we do it. And the name of that file is balls. So let's go back into the main files coding here and let's go SWFs slash balls dot SWF. <coughs> so this will load in or this URL request is set up to load in this path and this file. If it was sitting in the same directory, you just don't refer to that path. Same directory as your main main file, you just do it like that. But since we have an SWFs folder, we refer to its location, the balls.swfs location within that file, within that folder. Sorry. Okay, so we go to now let's uh, just say take the loader object and load the URL request into it here which is very simple open parenthesis close parenthesis and inside you put the URL request there and then semicolon and that should nope oh, nope we gotta type LDR dot load or else it won't do anything it'll throw an error more than likely so now we'll go down a couple of lines and now we're gonna create the function that's going to be the place where let's call this load handler the function name will be load handler and this will be where everything is controlled in this example anyway so we'll nest it off the curly brace we open our curly brace here and inside of these uh, parentheses we're going to type in event colon event okay now inside of the function we're going to claim a variable for the let's just call it my clip this is for the to control the external SWF we're going to convert it into a movie clip here once it's loaded in a movie clip instance that we can then command and I'll show you how movie clip equals let's grab event right here event dot target target dot content and that will effectively load the content of this file into this movie clip and you'll see that happen right now I'll test it actually right now let's go to add child so this will put it on stage and right here we're gonna put in my clip so you can just control C there and control V there and now let's run a trace so you can see what's kinda going on and trace is for getting a uh, getting at values and things you want to know without having to put like status text fields here on stage so you can trace my clip and see what it, what kind of value it gives you but before you do that if we tried to run this nothing would happen so we need an event listener so let's just type in a comment listener LDR for the loader and this is going to be a content loader info and you can read all about this in the help file in the language referencing section add event listener 
and this is going to be for the complete event so let's open close parenthesis semicolon and inside this uh, parenthesis we're going to type in event dot complete all caps comma and then the name of our function here so let's grab that control C control V now let's run it let's uh, first let's run the trace to see what it gives us so let's press control enter to render out our scene and object is the main timeline of that loaded SWF and you can see our main file if we publish out now we've effectively loaded in that external SWF no problem so let's go look at this SWF has a frame rate of 24 let's match frame rates here now let's publish out so you can see that the if it publishes out any time today hello hello there hello flash hello hello okay looks like the frame rate of the main file affects the frame rate of the external file let's put this on five extra slow publish out yeah, big time. Match up your frame rates. Don't forget, or you will have problems. Okay, so where were we? All right, now to show how to control this thing, we're going to add some more interactions within this load handler function. Okay, now the magic we've all been waiting for how to control those externally loaded blue balls from this timeline so let's uh... first thing we're going to need is let's see let's separate this out a little and we'll put our code for this right in between these here just for a visual separator I like to do to do that so I can easily visually identify different sections in my code and comments help too so function this one the first one will be for the, uh, the mouse over and then we'll do one for the mouse out so let's say my clip over that's a good name for it open parenthesis type in event colon mouse event <coughs> close parenthesis colon void open the curly brace close the curly brace so now that's function my clip over let's do the same thing here this one we'll call out my clip out and this is going to be mouse interactions and uh, now let's take the my clip movie clip instance name that we created for that externally loaded X SWF and we just say <coughs> excuse me didn't mean to cough all on in your face like that. Okay, so uh, my clip. Here's where we control. Let's see. We're gonna have to. I hope I can get this right the first time, so I don't look like a doofus. My blue balls. That's the name. The instance name on the movie clip inside the external SWF. Let's see. So you can command the main timeline or go I'm going to show you go even deeper and command the movie clips inside of it dot stop now we'll 
have a very similar one for the to make it play again when we mouse out. And that 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 looks good. So now we'll set a couple of listeners here. Put a little note. Set listeners. These are event listeners for those mouse interactions we just coded. And or those mouse functions. So let's grab my clip because that's going to be the the thing that's going to be interacting on stage. Add event or the object. Add event listener. This is going to be mouse event dot roll over. All caps underscore over. Let me put the comma and our function name right here. Close a parenthesis and close it all with a semicolon. Now pretty much the next one's gonna be the same thing, so we'll just copy it, paste it. This will be out. And this will be out. Okay, that should be right. So if I've, if I've got this correct, then what will happen is from our main file, we'll load in external SWF, and from our main file, we will control that SWF's timeline. Let's try it out. Booyah! Right when my mouse goes over either of the balls, it stops that movie clip, wherever it is. It's pretty cool, and it also commands it to play. Since there's a, a play command on the mouse out, when I move my mouse away from this ball, it replays, just like it's commanded to. So now I think that's pretty much it. Now you can pretty much feel your way around throughout all your SWFs from the main SWF. Go as many movie clips deep as you need to. Let's say inside of balls here, let's say this was a movie clip that had its own animation and it had an instance name of uh, ball1. You just go in your main file, my blue balls, dot ball1, dot stop, or dot go to and play whatever frame label you might have in there, whatever. Okay. So that's pretty much it. That little example, very simple example, shows how, and I'll have the source files in this code available for free at developphp.com if you want to get at it that way. And But this shows how you can load in your external SWFs and control their timelines and their movie clips from this main uh, file. And I suggest you nest your files, your external files into a movie clip so you can give it an instance name and it just gives it more for more intuitive control and plus plus better organization and uh, you can go as deep as you need into movie clips in this main code. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Let's get rid of that trace, we don't need that. Everything worked correctly good to go. We'll see you guys next lesson.